Many of us might remember the rollicking chorus we sang in our Sunday school days. Zacchaeus was a very little man and a very little man was he. We must stop singing that chorus for two good reasons. First, short people are not figures of fun. Second, Zacchaeus is not just an entertaining story for the Sunday school. This story tells us what caused us to repent, especially to repent of the kind of deliberate and sustained evil doing that only we grown-ups are good at. Zacchaeus was rich and he occupied a higher office in the Roman administrative system. He was the chief tax collector. We must also remember that tax collectors were not liked by the tax-paying people of the land because of their way of collecting commission alongside the actual tax. Therefore, although rich and high-ranking in the government, Zacchaeus was possibly hated by people. And now there was another reason for people to hate him or ridicule him. He was small and short. Zacchaeus must have found it difficult to move freely in a crowd. Some people might consider contact with him as contaminating. So we have here someone doubly offensive and doubly detested. He is shunned because of what is perceived as his disfigurement and loathed because of his cooperation with the occupying Roman authorities. The story presents Zacchaeus as a determined seeker. He had a genuine hindrance. He was shot. He would just get lost in the crowd. He had another hindrance that people would not be happy about him being with them. It is not easy to be with a group of people who look down on you always. But still, Zacchaeus would not give up. Zacchaeus is a challenge to many of us. We search for excuses. Lack of time, lack of resources, lack of opportunities, and so on. But Zacchaeus is determined to overcome the barriers rather than making them excuses. In doing that, he does not bother about the concept of respectability in the society. Think of a prominent member of the community running like a child in front of a crowd and climbing up a tree. That does not go along with our understanding of respectability in the society. Zacchaeus did not waste time thinking what was respectable and what was not respectable. He did not bother what people might think about him. Zacchaeus challenges us to make a choice, either to overcome the barriers in our relationship with God or make those barriers our excuses to stay away. You may like to know that the meaning of the Hebrew word from which the name Zacchaeus comes is clean or innocent. In that case, it is probable that this is a story of a Mr. Clean who was misjudged by people as unclean. There is another clue that supports this line of thinking in the story where Zacchaeus says that he will give half his riches to poor. A possible translation could be, I am already giving, or I do give half my riches to poor. In this case, Zacchaeus was just defending himself over against the misunderstanding of the people. He was already a good man. People just misjudged him. Jesus judges him well. 
we easily jump to conclusions. We have preconceived notions about people based on their background, race, class, looks, style, or even the way they dress. We group certain people together and apply some common criteria for all of them. We think nothing good can come out of certain categories of people. This is where Jesus makes the difference. The hero of the story is not Zacchaeus, but Jesus, as the concluding sentence of the story would suggest to us. Whether Zacchaeus was already a good man or he turned good through this incident, Jesus approaches him with an open mind and heart. Jesus did not engage in finger pointing. He did not blame and shame Jesus at Zacchaeus. He treated Zacchaeus with respect. He invited Zacchaeus to come down into the crowd from his elevated position in the tree. Jesus recognized Zacchaeus's deep desire to see and be seen by God. Jesus can mix with the outcast and the despised. He can reach out to the rich as well as the poor, tax collectors as well as prostitutes. No one is approached with preconceived notions. No one is judged and rejected. No person or situation is beyond hope or outside the limits of God's mercy. When we are hurt all over, live in a shame we can't bear, we can leave ourselves open for the power of God to get to work in our lives. Jesus' invitation to Zacchaeus is addressed to everyone who is not happy with their situation. This is an opportunity to open our hearts and place before God our fears, our worries, and our uncertainties, and to ask for the richness of his healing presence in the midst of our concerns. There is one more thing about Jesus that I would like you to notice here. We normally talk about seeking God. Yes, we must diligently seek God. But we are seeking a God who is earnestly seeking us. Jesus seems to seek Zacchaeus out first. Jesus did not apply grandma's rule. If you are nice and polite, then I will give you cookies. No, Jesus operates on his own gracious calculus. Before Zacchaeus could say a word of repentance, Jesus invited himself to Zacchaeus' house for a dinner. It was a total acceptance of Zacchaeus, just as he was. Jesus risked his reputation here. People began to murmur about Jesus. What sort of teacher is he who is associating himself with a sinner? We have here a wonderful example of the scandal of God's grace. God chooses to pick up the worst, the least, and the weak. God accepts us just as we are. It does not matter what people think about you, or even what you think about yourself. When you think that no one understands you, or you are finished, God is there. May God help us to see this God who is earnestly seeking us out always. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.